What's up YouTube? It's your boy, Cordy Boy. Today on episode four of Toolkit, we're talking about the United States Air Force's preferred method of flying non-precision approaches, the constant decent final approach, also known as the CDFA. Let's get it. So just a little backstory. Non-precision approaches are approaches where pilots get horizontal guidance telling them how far left or right of course they are from the center line of a runway, but no vertical guidance telling them how far above or below a certain glide slope that they are. Because of this, many pilots have been taught that when shooting non-precision approaches that they need to dive to get below the weather, get to their minimum decent altitude, and then drive in till they're visual with the runway. This method is called the dive and drive technique. With that being said, controlled flight in the terrain, also known as CFIT, is a primary cause of worldwide commercial aviation fatal accidents. Unstable approaches are a key contributor to CFIT events. Non-precision approaches are designed with and without step-down fixes in the final segment. Step-downs flown without a constant descent require multiple thrusts, pitch, and altitude adjustments inside the FAV, close to obstacles, and close to terrain. These adjustments, while slow and low to the ground, can increase pilot workload and potential errors during critical phases of flight. Here you can see some of the common pilot errors when conducting the dive and drive technique. First of all, after descending from the final approach fix to the MDA, the pilot could lose SA on when to level off and descend straight into the terrain. The next common error is the pilot can properly capture the minimum descent altitude, but slowly allow the altitude to slip out of his cross check, causing a slow and insidious drift into terrain. Next, the pilot can descend to his minimum descent altitude, drive in, make visual with the runway, and improperly assess a proper three degree glide slope, or whatever is applicable for his aircraft, and have an early drug in approach which puts them at risk of coming in contact with low close-in obstacles. Alternatively, the pilot can drive in, see the airfield, wait until too late to assess a proper glide slope, drive in too steep, cause a tail swap, and have a really firm or unsafe landing. In the figure, you can see that the pilot must make one pitch and power change at the FAF in order to descend down to their MDA. Once at the MDA, the pilot must make another pitch and power change in order to level off. Once leveled off, the pilot drives in until they are at their visual descent point, at which point they make another pitch and power change to descend to the runway. Once at the runway, the pilot will make another pitch and power change in order to finally come down and land at the airport. This figure shows the exact same approach using the constant descent final approach technique. Under this technique, the pilot makes a pitch and power change at the FAF in order to begin their descent. Once at the derived descent altitude, the pilot makes the decision to execute missed approach or to land the aircraft. If the decision to land is made, the pilot does not need to make any further pitch and power changes as they've already calculated a constant descent from the FAF to the runway. The only other pitch and power change needed is when executing the landing portion of the approach. As you can see, the CDFA technique, although requiring more mission planning, is much simpler to execute and requires far fewer pitch and power changes, which could potentially be points of conflict during this critical time of flight. For this reason, civil operators in the European Union must fly all non-precision approaches using the CDFA technique, unless otherwise approved by controlling agencies. Likewise, while not mandatory, the United States Air Force has made the CDFA the preferred method of flying non-precision approaches. As you can probably tell by now, the CDFA is a method of flying non-precision approaches that allow the pilots to set one pitch in power from a given altitude and descend to a decision altitude. The pilot needs to make no adjustments for level offs or intermediate fixes, and the pilot can free up plenty of brain bites to make sure they're monitoring the safety of the aircraft. Mission planning for a constant descent final approach is very simple. First, the instrument procedure, 
needs to have a published vertical descent angle or VDA. The VDA ensures obstacle clearance from the FAF altitude down to the runway on a specific glide slope. In other words, starting a descent from cubes at 2,500 feet on a two and a half degree glide slope angle will get you down to the runway at a threshold crossing height of 45 feet above the end of the runway. Well, how do we know that we're maintaining a two and a half degree glide slope from the FAF and down to the runway? It's pretty simple. On a climb descent table, find your desired glide slope on the left hand side. Move across the table until you line it up with your desired ground speed. This number will give you the indicated VVI that you would like to see in order to maintain your desired glide slope at your desired airspeed. In other words, starting at the final approach fixed altitude of 2,500 feet and a final approach speed of 120 knots, if you maintain a 530 foot per minute descent, you'll cross a threshold at 45 feet and be clear of all obstacles inside the path. But what about an approach like this one? with the VDA published inside of the FAF. It's still simple, but requires a little bit more math. Let's talk about it. All you have to do is divide the desired altitude to lose by the desired descent gradient. This will give you how many miles prior to the runway to start your descent in order to get a constant descent from your final approach fix altitude to your runway at the prescribed threshold crossing height. This equation sums up that process. You take the final approach fixed altitude and subtract the airport elevation and threshold crossing height. From there, you divide that by the descent gradient, which is just the glide slope angle times 100. In this case, the final approach fixed altitude is 2,000 feet. The airport elevation is 81 feet above sea level and the threshold crossing height is 46 feet. A decent gradient of 2.98 degrees can be approximated to be about 300 feet per nautical mile. Running the numbers gives you a calculation of 6.24 nautical miles, or six and a quarter miles from the end of the runway to start your descent on a three degree glide slope will get you 46 feet above the ground. As you can see, the DME is counting up, so we must subtract 6.24 from 8.7 to give us the DME at which we should begin our descent. After running the numbers again, we find out that if we start our descent at 2.46 DME, we can have one single constant descent final approach from 2000 feet MSL down to the runway without any pitch power changes to accommodate for obstacles. Please clap. As a disclaimer, this video was specifically intended for Air Force pilots and references the AFMAN 11202 Volume 3, dated 10 June 2020. This document also references the FAA Advisory Circular 1020-108, which is the FAA guidance on continuous descent final approaches, as well as the IKO Document 8168, which is the IKO document on continuous descent final approaches. Well, there you go. Everything you could possibly know about a continuous descent final approach. Please share my content to anybody that you think would uh, need to see this, specifically people in pilot training, and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the new audio quality. Just bought a brand new microphone for the channel, so things sound a little better. Um, Till next time, see ya.